Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I want to show you a game called Neos the Universe. It's a really neat game that I found on the Oculus Rift Indie Arcade on the main website. It's made by the people that made Sightline the Chair, which was a very good, albeit trippy, Oculus game. And this one is kind of uh, scientific in a way. You start very, very small and look at the smallest things in the universe, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it tries to show us the scale of our universe. And uh, you might have seen some similar things online, but this is guaranteed to be a trip in first person. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, let's go ahead and jump right into Oculus Rift mode. All right, let's see what we've got. Neos VR the universe. Uh, narrative experience, we don't need that. That's a lot of talking. Headphones recommended. Scroll vertically to change scale. Gotcha. Let's do, uh, let's keep it in metric for now. I much prefer metric over imperial. And we'll do freeform mode. Whoa. Let's go down. Let's, let's scroll all the way down to the bottom as fast as we possibly can and see... Whoa, this is getting crazy already. Okay. Let's start at the bottom. So we are down here at one zeptometer, which is a unit of measurement so small I've never seen one uh, atometer, or one AM. I think that's kind of like the size of the atom, apparently. Yeah, that's an electron, upper bound. It's about as big as an electron can get, which is something so small and so fast we're not even sure if it's a particle or a wave or both. So let's scroll up a little bit. Let's increase this. Uh, still an electron. One atometer. Oh, there's neutrons up here and protons. Where's our electron at? Our electron is probably so small at this point. Yep, see, this is one thing that's really cool about physics. You're, I'm trying to reach out and grab it. The electron is just dramatically smaller than a neutron or a proton. I don't know where's my pro protons over here. They're approximately, these guys are approximately similar in size, but the electron is very, very small. The crazy thing is the electrons are the only thing that we ever interact with. They contain all of the energy, what we mostly deal with in nuclear reactions, chemical reactions. We never really even touch the protons and neutrons very much. By the way, if you did touch a proton or neutron, you're probably creating a nuclear reaction. You would explode. Let's move up one picometer, which is astonishingly small. This is 10 to the negative 12 meters. We're starting to kind of see atoms. And what is this? A gamma gigantic gamma ray. Holy crap. Gamma rays, which are indeed bad for you and will cause cancer. It's an excitement. It's an energy wave that hits your body and messes things up. So let's scroll up a little bit. Make this picometer. Whoa, we're getting uh, an x-ray hard. See, this is what we would use when you get x-rayed. See, you can see the difference between the x-rays and the gamma rays floating around here. Uh, we have a gigantic water molecule, which is several of these atoms. Let's go ahead and scroll on up. Uh, ethanol alcohol. <laughs> it kind of looks like a cute dog, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like a cute little doggy? It really does. Our hydrogen atom is way smaller now. Look at that tiny little guy. Uh, what is a rhinovirus? That is... Whoa, we got DNA on the side over here. Carbon nanotubes. Technology of the future. Soft x-rays. Uh, I a phospholipid bilayer, yes, these are kind of the things in your cells that determine what goes in and out, those phospholipids. Uh, DNA is just, just massive right now, and alpha helix. Wow, this is some crazy stuff. This is really great to visualize. Uh, this is, I know I'm kind of nerding out here, but I really like this. Let's make that DNA a little bit smaller. And here we can see a bacteriophage. I think that, isn't that a type of virus? I do think that's a type of virus. It's just like a DNA injection tube, which is very strange. Uh, we have UV, ultra, we have red light, blue light, which is another type of wave. The rhinovirus is starting to look really kind of freaky at this point. Uh, carbon nanotubes got really small. <laughs> uh, whoa, adenovirus. A CPU transistor gate, one of the smaller components of a CPU. It's astounding to think that we can manufacture something so small that it competes with like alpha helixes and DNA in a, a glucose ring. Whoa, that is, that is just crazy. That, here's our hydrogen atom again. That's our water molecule, just floating around down there, all tiny. So strange. Purple wavelength. What is this big thing? Mitochondria, powerhouse of the cell. You can see the light rays just zipping about. Chloroplast, that, uh, I think that's part of the photosynthesis for plants. Red blood cells floating around. A human cell of average size and a chromosome. And a tardigrade, which is crazy to think that a tardigrade is comparable in size to a single cell. Water bears, one of the few animals that can survive in deep space. Salmonella virus, gross. A dust mite and a grain of salt. Let's scroll on up. There's more water bears. Coffee beans. 
That's actually very freaky. It looks like a head crab from Fallout. A grain of sand. There's the blood cell. You can see it a little bit better from this distance. Paramecium. The largest bacteria in the world, which is quite big. A human hair. What the balls? I didn't I didn't know human hairs were that big. Relatively. Grains of salt, cubicle. Because it, it maintains its shape. Sand. A rice grain. Sweet. <laughs> Matchsticks. This is weird. I feel like really small snowflakes. Hey, there's a CPU! Intel. Ivy Bridge. I'm rocking an i7. Coffee bean. A worm. Micro SD. This is kind of creepy. Like, I feel really little. Like, this just... This kind of creeps me the hell out right now. <laughs> this is... I need to get these big things out of my face. Cell phone. <clears throat> now we're kind of normal. Oh my god, that's not quite normal. I guess I'm like child size, I suppose. Probably about two foot tall at the moment. Uh, T-Rex is looking pretty massive. There's a big whale, a beach ball. I guess I'm still a little bit, a little bit on the tiny side here. See, we still have snowflakes and little pieces of dust floating around. Let me go about human size. Okay, so now I feel about person size. And uh, the T-Rex is still very big. Well, we got a bunch of dinosaurs behind us. Cars, Eiffel Tower we can look up to. Statue of Liberty, we're hovering above. Here comes a dolphin. Huh. Basketball seems normal. I want to get to these dinosaurs. An ostrich egg. Can't grab it. Whoa, bud. It makes the heart beat faster when the T-Rex comes by. The Brachiosaurus. Huh. Giant squid. Let's make it smaller. Okay, now it looks like a matchbox car. Wow, the squid's bigger than the car. That's kind of crazy. T-Rex is not small. Locomotive Eiffel Tower. Whale pyramids. Radio waves. Now we can start seeing these. These are how we use this. is how we communicate with each other. They're so big they can't hurt us. A football field. Okay. The whale is surprisingly large compared to... Stop that, that's scary, even at your size. That little bitty dinosaur, he's so little. One kilometer, tiny trains. See, now I feel like I'm in a model world where everything is a tiny little model. Whoa, Phobos. What is this? There's a city behind me? What is this crazy thing? The Large Hadron Collider, where we do particle physics to learn about these kinds of things. It's quite large, it's the size of a mountain, Mount Everest. I want to see the city behind me. An asteroid. This is the city of Paris behind me. Huh. Getting pretty big here. Oops, wrong way. Asteroid Ganymede. I remember watching that in uh, Cowboy Bebop. It was like watery. They had it. Yeah, city of Paris is... Huh. You can fit kind of Paris on Ganymede if you stretch it out. Liquid fresh water. One megameter. Thousand kilometers. That's the moon, the United States, the United Kingdom, Mercury, Ukraine, Czech Republic, Pluto. Let's compare the United Kingdom to the United States, huh? Yeah, you can see US is a little bit bigger. Oh, now we got the Earth in here and all the planets. This is getting pretty dope. All of the water on Earth is comparable in size to Mercury, which is crazy. Australia coming in to dwarf everybody with their huge continent country. Silly Australia. That Earth looks really cool. I'm going to wait for that to rotate back around. That looks really like Jupiter. Mars looks really... The moon. Liquid fresh water. Huh. Australia compared to Venus. Australia compared to Ukraine. Pluto. Pluto is uh, not that big. <laughs> Pluto is about the size of all the water on Earth. Uh, Pluto is about the size of our moon. So I suppose it has just barely enough gravity to walk on. Mercury wants to bump us. Earth looks really dope. It really does. Beautiful planet. Glad we live on it. Uh, Uranus. A little bigger than Earth. Saturn. Sirius. That's a star. Not the radio. One gigameter. Here comes Venus. There's all the water on Earth again. Really tiny. I think that's Pluto again. So we've got the United States floating around. The proud USA. We'll see how it compares to uh, Jupiter. We're going to compare the US to Jupiter. Really tiny. <laughs> uh, 
whoa, even now Earth is getting to be a tiny dot. Now this is where things are going to start getting freaky and very abstract in a lot of ways. I think this tiny little dot here is going to be like Pluto or something. So everything, at this point you should start realizing that you are a very, very small part of a very, very big universe. Where is our sun? Yeah, so this is, that's uh, Earth I don't even think is showing up. Uh, I think that tiny, this tiny little dot is Earth. That's Jupiter. Our sun left us. Yeah, here's our sun. So there's there's Earth, and there's the sun. Super huge difference, millions of times. We can keep scrolling out, and our sun isn't even a big sun. It's it's actually relatively, I think I'd say average. Many of them get bigger, many, many, many. Betelgeuse, gigantic. One astronomical unit, one AU. This is how we use to calculate distances in space. Just in case you read any hard sci-fi books or you become an astronaut, that's how most of you would. And Terry is one of the largest. <laughs> Here's our entire solar system compared to Antares. Holy crap. Our sun <laughs> is starting to feel really, really small. And now we have these stars that have more abstract names. You see our planet's rotations. I don't think these are uh, mathematically correct exactly because Pluto and stuff should be larger. Solar system diameter planets, only one AU. It's, it's so tiny now. And the crazy thing is at this point, these uh, mega structures to me, maybe it's kind of like a, a stoner thought or like a shower thought from Reddit, they seem to mirror the very tiny uh, atoms and molecules and particles that we see at the tiny scale. Like the gigantic scale and the tiny scale are visually similar, at least in my opinion, but the mathematics between the two don't add up. Now we're looking at nebulas. Our whole solar system's a tiny dot, super tiny, and now it's gone. <laughs> we are looking at one light year, a distance so absurd that it would take you a year to see it all because that's how far, how long it would take the light to travel. A petameter, holy crap. A butterfly nebula, several light years. Nursery of the stars, star clusters. See, now we're looking at the tarantula nebula, sombrero revenue. Small Magellanic Cloud, Dwarf Galaxies, one centimeter. holy crap, where is our galaxy? Where is the Milky Way? Andromeda, here we go, Milky Way. This is our home galaxy. They got some other, some Brero Galaxy, I love the name, so classy scientists. Andromeda Galaxy, but yeah, here we are at the Milky Way. You can see our whole galaxy coming by. And to think that one of those little specks of dust is our solar system, just one of these tiny little cloudy specks of dust that's floating around in the background is our entire solar system. But we're not even a big galaxy. When you zoom out, you can see that our galaxy is a very small part of the universe. You can do yada meter, you can do galaxy filaments, and now we're getting into the megastructure of the universe. The biggest, yeah, I can't really quite read that, the observable universe. Galaxy filaments. See, these are groups of galaxies that rotate each other, which is crazy. I'm gonna zoom down a little bit. Uh, but so like uh, galaxies like our Milky Way and the Sombrero Galaxy and Andromeda, they like stars, planets, and suns rotate each other and into this sort of large structure that you're looking at right now, which is astronaut. It's mind blowing to think that we're sitting on a planet that's spinning, it's rotating a sun, and the sun is moving, and the galaxy and the solar system is moving, and then the galaxy that you're in is also moving, and. <laughs> You can be part of a cluster of galaxies that is moving, and I don't know, we're just moving incredibly fast at the moment. The observable universe! <laughs> this is all, this is our whole universe, this is what we can observe, roughly spherical, going to be expanding forever, and the rest of this is just all abstraction, we're kind of, this is it, this is all the things that in the world, the observable universe, it's as much as we know. Anything else? Your guess is as good as mine. We can go all the way back down. All the way back down through the galaxies. We can see the solar system, the planets, the stars, Earth, large cities, big buildings, people, balls, structures, particles, tardigrades, cells, viruses, atoms, x-rays, and we're kind of down here at Planck links and atomic units and gigantic electrons. It's kind of funny how an electron looks a lot like our universe. Mind-blowing to me. Really mind-blowing. 
Whew. Well, guys, that's all for this video. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something, something fun, anyway. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe to the channel. Drifter out.